Hi, welcome in. This is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com. I am just back from London, England for another amazing Quit Drinking Boot Camp. It's so, um, it's just the best thing I do to see people's lives changing like that. And if you came to London, thank you so much. It was a real pleasure to meet you. Uh, next up, uh, Next boot camp is going to be Chicago, back in the States, 3rd of August. If you would like to get your place, do it today, because at the moment there's 25% off the ticket price that will be going up in the next few days, okay? StopDrinkingExpert.com if you want to come to Chicago for Quit Drinking Boot Camp. After that, it's Dublin, then we're back in London, and then New York will finish the year, uh, the year off there. So today's video. Uh, BBC Panorama, which is a documentary program in the UK, a bit like 60 Minutes, that sort of thing. Uh, tonight, they're doing an investigation into the alcohol industry and how big alcohol is not playing fair. And a year ago, a UK broadcaster by the name of Adrian Childs uh, kind of uh, went through a process of examining his, ho his own drinking, having his liver checked, and he was shocked to discover that he thought he was just a normal everyday person and his drinking was nothing significant. He certainly didn't label himself as having a problem. He discovered he was drinking five times the government recommended amount of alcohol uh, every week. He found out that his liver was in trauma, that he had high blood pressure, that he had all these other disorders appearing because of his drinking. And he was completely shocked by it because he had no idea that what he was doing was abnormal. And that's part of the reason why we now have a problem drinking epidemic in the Western world. And yet it doesn't look like that, does it? It doesn't look like anything has changed. Alcohol's always been there. The beer commercials are still fun. There's still the suggestions that if you drink this brand of vodka, you turn into James Bond. Nothing's really changed on the surface. And that's why this alcohol problem is a bit like an iceberg, because we can see only a very small portion of it at surface level. And predominantly because the way we consume alcohol has changed dramatically over the last 50 years. You see, 50 years ago, alcohol was not really consumed in the home like it is today. If you think back, I mean, I, I don't know about the States but because I grew up in the UK, but you go back to when I was a child, the alcohol section in supermarkets was like six foot long. It was like just a couple of shelves. I think there were like five makes of wine back then. There was a really cheap, sweet German white wine. There was a, uh, a rosé wine in a bell-shaped bottle. Do you remember that one? And your mom used to make a candle, put a candle in it and make a candlestick holder out of the bottle after it. Matthias Rosé, it was called. Uh, what else was there? There was some really acidic French wine. There was a couple of Spanish wines. And that was it. People didn't really drink at home. Certainly wine wasn't a thing. That's just something that's come in in, in fairly recent times. Uh, you know, alcohol was consumed in bars, taverns and pubs. And for that reason, everyone knew the town drunk. You know, he was the guy that got threw out of the pub every night. Everyone talked about him. It was above the surface. You could see it happening. These days, bars and pubs are closing down at a monumental rate because we're not consuming our alcohol in public anymore. What we're doing is we're going to the supermarket and we're stocking up on special offers. We're going to the alcohol section that is now five aisles long and they've got every type of wine from every country of the world. They've got every liqueur going, every spirit going. It just goes on. It's an ocean of alcohol. And we're taking it home. And that's dangerous for many reasons because it means nobody's watching us. Nobody's seeing what we're doing. Uh, secondly, we're not pouring pub measures. You know, I, back when I was a drinker, I used to believe, honestly believe, that a bottle of wine contained three glasses. <laughs> so when people used to ask me, how much do you drink? I'd say, ah, oh, you know, a couple of glasses a night. I genuinely believed that's what I was doing. You know, it's a whole bottle. And so nobody's watching us. We're pouring these supersized measures. 
and we're buying it so cheap and on special offers that we just keep our cupboards stocked with the stuff. And we're getting into this routine, you know, as soon as the kids go to bed or as soon as we get home from work, the beer is open, the wine is open and we start drinking. And it's become a daily recurrence for a lot of people. And what liver specialists around the world are now shocked at is how young the people are who are turning up at the emergency rooms with end stage liver failure. This is an epidemic that's bubbling under the surface. We can't even see what is coming at the moment. Because alcohol is going to go the same way as tobacco, as cigarette smoking. We're just about 30 years behind. Where we are now today, it's like being in the 1970s or the early 1980s with cigarette smoking. There's kind of this building awareness that this isn't the social pleasantry that we've always been told that it is. There is something darker, more insidious and dangerous lurking underneath. And we're only just starting to put a spotlight on it. But I'm telling you here and now, we are not far enough down the line to say that we're winning. At the moment, we are losing. We are going backwards at an exponential rate. And not until millions of people die in agony are we going to start making some progress. So, look, the point of this video really is to encourage you. If you're currently questioning your drinking and you found me on the internet, you've maybe been to my website or found my YouTube channel or whatever it is, I encourage you to take some action now. It may feel like you're the odd one out. You may feel like the social leper and you might be thinking, why is it me who, who can't just have one drink? Why, why is it me watching these videos, listening to these podcasts? Why is it not my friends? Why do I have to be the person you know, who's struggling with this? Look, everyone who has alcohol in their life has a problem in their life. And what you see is not normally reality. Alcohol is a bit like social media. You know, if you look at Facebook, it would appear that all of your friends have a perfect life. They're super happy. They have amazing relationships. Their kids are doing so good at school and so on and so on. And when you look around a bar and in pubs, most of the people you see, you'll think, why are they getting away with it? They seem to be just having a couple of drinks, laughing and joking with their friends. They'll go home and there's no harm done. But you, you have no idea what is going on behind the scenes. Back when I was a drinker, I was drinking two bottles of wine a night, a bottle of spirits in over the weekend. I was spending maybe $12,000, $13,000 a year on alcohol. I was drinking every day without fail. And yet there was no real evidence of it. I was never late for work. I always turned up on time. I wasn't sneaking off to the restrooms to drink vodka in my lunch break. Um, I was turning up doing my job and going home and drinking. I wasn't getting thrown in the drunk tank every night. I didn't have any DUIs. I was the director of two multi-million pound companies. I was the patron of a children's charity. Anyone looking at my life would say, Nothing wrong, with, nothing wrong with what Craig's doing. And yet I was profoundly miserable and in a complete downward cycle of despair because I couldn't control my drinking anymore. So don't assume that what you see out there is real. It's an illusion because this is a big problem. And like I said, it's an iceberg. You can't see most of the problem. It's hidden beneath the surface. Now, as to the question, that I was interviewed uh, about on Saturday for a UK radio station. And, th and this question was, is the alcohol industry deliberately hiding the truth about its product? And the answer is a big fat yes. Because, you know, go back to the start of the video when I was talking about, you know, you can't even buy a McDonald's these days without it telling you the the calorie content of your food. You can't buy anything in a supermarket without it having traffic lights on and warning signs and high fat, high sodium, high calorie, high sugar. We're being warned all over the place because quite frankly, we have proved we are incapable of regulating our consumption in any area. You know, we have um, 
three rescue dogs here in Cyprus. And they're all big fat pigs. If you gave them unlimited access to food, they would all eat themselves to death. They're that stupid. And, you know, it's easy to, to mock them and jeer at them and say, oh, you stupid animals. But if you think about it, we're no better. You know, we were given unlimited access to fast food and alcohol and candy and uh, told to regulate it for ourselves. And all we've succeeded in doing is creating an obesity epidemic and also an alcohol epidemic. So we're no better than the big fat pigs that I call pets. But alcohol and the industry itself has a part to play in this big story because they're not playing by the rules and the governments of the world are not enforcing the rules. Think about it. You buy a big gulp Coca-Cola, it will say somewhere in the store how many calories are in that drink. If you buy a can of sugary soda, on the side it will tell you everything that's in it. It will tell you how many calories, it will tell you how much fat, it will tell you everything. Go into a bar and look down the row of lagers and ciders and beers available, and I bet you 10% of them will say the percentage of alcohol on them. Maybe 5% of them, maybe not even 5%, come on, let's be realistic. 1% of them will tell you how many calories are in a pint of that beer. And it seems to be that the alcohol industry has got out a, 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 a get out of jail free card. It's like they don't have to play by the rules that all the other food companies do. Why don't they have to display this listing? And the reality is they do, they just don't. And the government doesn't push them to do so. Why not? Well, look, this is my own cynical view of this. It's just my opinion. You'd have to be very, very brave or very, very stupid as a political party to pitch your manifesto on the removal of the thing that the vast majority of society believes is a benefit, alcohol. Can you imagine running for government saying, vote for us and if you do, we'll get rid of alcohol? They, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work, would it? But also, if you're in government, and you'll forgive my skepticism here, but I've watched what's happening in the UK with Brexit. I've watched with horror some of the hard right politics that is creeping into the world these days. If you are a corrupt government official, and corruption is rife in governments around the world, it's all backhanders and brown envelopes. It's an absolute disgrace. If that is you, if you are in the corruption of politics as it is today, let me ask you a question. Do you want the people out there to be really intelligent, really focused and concentrating on exactly what you're doing? Or do you want them sedated, a bit stupid and completely blissfully unaware of what's going on? It doesn't serve politicians to have people too intelligent. And you might think that sounds melodramatic and come on, Craig, it's not, there's no big conspiracy theory. There has, it, there is a conspiracy theory and there always has been. Go back a few hundred years. If you were running a country, if you were the emperor or king of a country and you wanted to go to war against your neighbors, this is back in the day when wars were fought on battlefields with spears and knives and basically disemboweling each other. None of this long range weaponry business. The battles were bloody and gruesome. So let me ask you a question. How do you get several thousand of your countrymen to willingly charge into their own certain death? There's even a name for it. They call it Dutch courage. They used to liberally hand out rations of alcohol to the army on the days before the battle. Alcohol would be a part of their wages. Why? Because it's a lot easier to get a bunch of stupid people to run to their certain death than it is to people who are stone cold sober and acutely aware of what is about to happen. They falsely labeled it as being brave, as being loyal to your country. 
having courage. The truth is, they were manipulated by the government, by the leaders of their time. Big alcohol is the same as big tobacco. It is knowingly and willingly killing its customers for profit. That is the bare bones of it. Those fun commercials you see in the halftime show at the Super Bowl, the beer ads on TV, the sexy slinky wine commercials that you see next to your favorite sitcom, they look innocent and fun and carefree. The reality is they are narcissistic, they are evil, and they are devious. The alcohol industry is not playing fair, it is not correctly labeling its products, and it is complicit in the death of three million people every year. That is the hard black and white fact. So I encourage you to stick your head outside the bubble of unreality that the whole of the Western world lives in around this drug. I encourage you to wake up and stop feeling like the odd one out. Stop feeling like that you're the only one that has to stop drinking the social pleasantry that everyone else is having fun with because it's not true. That's just the illusion that is being painted for us to consume. People are not having fun with this drug. It is killing people at a growing rate and they're not dying a nice death, I'm telling you. Liver failure is no fun. So take solace that you're not on your own and that if you've made the decision to deal with your drinking, whether it's by going to AA, by going to rehab, doing my online course, coming to my quit drinking boot camp, then you're doing a profoundly good thing and you're ahead of the curve because a lot of people have a long way to go and a lot of denial to get out of before they realize what, need, what must be done to avoid something terrible happening to them. So I hope that uh, helps. Uh, I hope it gives you food for thought. If you have any questions or you want me to talk about anything specific, then please get in touch and let me know. Craig at craigbeck.com is my email address. Uh, don't forget to go to my website, stopdrinkingexpert.com and sign up for today's free quit drinking webinar. I'll even give you a copy of my book, Alcohol Lied to Me, as a free gift just for turning up. Uh, and if you can do, come to a boot camp because I would absolutely love to meet you. Next one is Chicago then Dublin, then the UK, then New York. StopDrinkingExpert.com. Thanks for watching. See you soon.